Lord be with you. And Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Let's look at the announcements uh, in the service folder that has the picture on the front. And first of all, we look to the prayer of the church. I also wanted to say, uh, someone asked me last week, um, why do we ring the bell five minutes before the service? And in order to explain what we do in the order that we do it, um, it's a five minute warning. Uh, it's an opportunity to come in and to sit down and to begin to prepare yourself uh, to hear God's word and receive his grace. You know, I think in the old days, as I've been told, they used to, uh, very early in the morning, they used to ring the bell, um, you know, 6.30, 6 o'clock, something like that. And that was a reminder, today is the day you come rest. Today is the day you come and hear God's word. So we give you a five-minute warning rather than a several-hour warning. All right, uh, prayer of the church. Are there others we need to add to our prayers today? Okay. Uh, a couple other announcements, and then uh, we have someone who wants to talk to you for a moment. Uh, today, after the service and then after Bible class, I encourage you to come to Bible class today. We're going to have a very interesting discussion on the role of men and women together, so that should be fun. Um, and after the Bible class, there will be an opportunity to uh, hear from uh, Mike Dickman, he's going to uh, tell us about uh, some of the resources of Thrivent, uh, especially the new Action Team program. There'll be a light lunch uh, after the service to that end. Uh, also, I want to make mention that uh, it was an incredible amount of money that was given uh, by you and by the other congregations of our circuit, our sister congregations. Uh, to provide for the Madagascar Bible Translation Project, the, a total, to this point anyway, a total of $3,503.43. And so thanks be to God and to all of you who gave to that end. And I promise you that I'll give you a report on that. There'll be pictures involved, and I'll show you uh, how those Bibles are being used, uh, the Greek and uh, uh, Hebrew <coughs> Testaments. And then coming up in this next quarter, the mission team is promoting uh, Nor Northern Ozarks Lutherans for Life as a project and so keep that in mind that we're going to have ongoing projects, mission projects that we can uh, look to and reach out to. Uh, this is a more local project uh, but it also has um, uh, impact uh, across our nation and certainly a voice throughout the world that we support life, all life. Uh, let's see and then uh, just to point out too, uh, downstairs uh, in the uh, entry exit area there downstairs, there's the Easter lily. Some of you purchased an Easter lily. If you would like that Easter lily, they're wilting fast and uh, grab it today. And then also there's some pans and bowls down there that have been left. Uh, if, if, take a look at those. If some of them are yours, grab those. If, uh, uh, if you, they don't get grabbed, uh, they're going to be taken uh, to a place where they can be used. And then finally, I'll point out that uh, Scrip is available through PIE. Uh, take advantage of that program to uh, buy the script and, and then to support LSA as well. So to that end, we'll have Larry come forward. He wants to uh, make an announcement with respect to LSA. Good morning. As many of you know, Lutheran School uh, Association has been accredited since 2000 through the National Lutheran School Accreditation of the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod. And that was first done in 2000. We were re-accredited in 2008. And this last Thursday, Friday, this past couple days, we had a group of people, six individuals that came in. We had three locally from, from uh, Cole Camp. We had two from Calvary and Kansas City and one in St. Louis that came in and went through all the things that we've went through, all the evidences and all the documentation that we came up with, and they have recommended at this point that we, we be re-accredited for the year 2015. And that's a, that's a wonderful thing for us to be able to do. And I want to come out and let you know that, that we've been re-accredited. It's unofficial. At this point, that's their recommendation. It will go from here to the district, and the district in, in June will uh, make their recommendation, and they'll pass that on to the national, which will be in August. But that should just be a formality at this point, but I want to let you know that. I want to let you know that thank you uh, 
for all the support that you as Trinity Lutheran School Church has done for the Lutheran School way back in the years when it was just Trinity Lutheran School and there was three in the area to, in the early 60s when it became Lutheran School Association. Your support has been phenomenal to the school. We appreciate all the people that have been on a board for the school or presently serving on the school board. We thank you for those of you people who are staff members at one time or are currently on staff at Lutheran School. Uh, what you've done is and, and set up the, the where, what Lutheran School is today is phenomenal. It really is. And uh, with that accreditation, it's a five-year accreditation. It's a new process that they're doing. And we are one of the first schools to do that. They did it last year for the first time. Uh, a school in St. Louis went through that process. And we are one of, I believe, it's five schools going through that process this year uh, throughout the, in Missouri. So it's a whole new way of doing things for accreditation. It's much more thorough, a lot more work, and, but it's well worth it. Uh, with that accreditation, they have uh, said that we have been accredited without any deficiencies, uh, without any major concerns, so that's a, that's a positive thing. They did list five outstanding strengths for us. Uh, traditionally, when I've been involved with the, with the accreditation process, usually they do three, sometimes four. We've been blessed to have five of those, uh, and I'd like to read those to you. One is community perception as a school that provides quality Christian education. Two, teachers and administrators are dedicated to their students and display its true servanthood attitude. Congregational support is extremely strong. The relationship between the pastor, the teaching staff, and the parents is commendable. And the last one is the completion of the self-study report and gathering exhibits was well done. I said that one last because of, of the amount of work that's done, but also this year with them redoing this whole process, we didn't get the materials until really the end of September, the first part of October. So we were being cut down tremendously the amount of time we had to get this going. And then I was sick for a couple weeks in October, which leads into Christmas time. So we lost a lot of time there. And uh, the staff did a phenomenal job about getting this together and bringing it up there. Not half-heartedly or anything like that, but they did a good job of getting things done and, and, and doing a really, really good job. And I'd also like to thank their steering committee that's been involved with this immensely. Uh, they, we didn't meet as much as we wanted to because of being sick and getting things late. But I gave them documents and they took them home and they scratched those out and they edited and did all that kind of stuff, brought it back and it, it was a great team effort. Um, the six people that came in as a site visit uh, were, were, are super people, could not be happier for the six people we got for our site visitation team and went through the, all that documentation. I guess in essence we can say is you can be proud of the school that you support and we'd like to thank you for the support you've had for Lutheran education at, at Lutheran School Association these last 50 plus years and years before that when it was just an individual school, church and school here at Trinity as well. Any questions? I kind of went through kind of quickly but I just want to let you know that, that we are reaccredited and, and uh, we'll be going on. And our process, or what we want to do, is become more intentional with that, tell others about the school within the Cole Camp community and beyond, and uh, have the school continue to grow and grow and grow. So at this point, anybody have any questions? Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, what a, what a wonderful school staff, students that we have, and we can only give thanks to God uh, for that. And the faith that is taught there, the, ki the children are grounded in the faith. Um, I've, I've borne witness to that, and I rejoice in it every day. And so uh, we are encouraged to support LSA and, and pray that it continues uh, well into the future. So let's uh, endeavor to do that. I want to mention with respect to the service today that um, uh, we don't, uh, essentially we don't have an organist. Although Diane has, uh, bless her heart, she came uh, and uh, recorded our hymns with the exception of the last hymn. I thought the last hymn we should all probably know and be able to sing a cappella. Um, the other hymns we know too, and it's great to have accompaniment. The, um, the liturgy, I asked her not to record the liturgy. I thought we could do that without accompaniment. I want to hear, we have beautiful singers in the congregation, so let's sing out and I'll lead when it comes to the liturgy. The choir is gonna, is gonna bolster uh, everything that we do as well. And so uh, we'll, uh, we'll make do while Diane is gone and welcome her when she comes back. Our opening hymn this morning, since we are still in the season of Easter, uh, third Sunday of Easter, I didn't change the title on the uh, service folder, but it's the third Sunday of Easter. Our opening hymn, number 473, Our Paschal Lamb That Sets Us Free.
name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I will go to the altar of God. To God and joy. Our help is in the name of the Lord. and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. God, be merciful to you and strengthen your faith. Amen. Do you believe that the forgiveness I speak is not my forgiveness, but God's? Yes. Let it be done for you as you believe, in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ. I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The earth is full of the steadfast love of the Lord. Alleluia. By the word of the Lord, the heavens were made. Alleluia. Behold, the eye of the Lord is on those who fear him, on those who hope in his steadfast love. Our soul waits for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The earth is full of the steadfast love of the Lord. Alleluia. By the word of the Lord, the heavens were made. Alleluia. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of, us, of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save. Comfort and defend us, gracious Lord. Lord, have mercy. Amen. To God on high be glory and peace to all the earth. Good will from God.
And God, through the humiliation of your Son, you raised up the fallen world. Grant to your faithful people, rescued from the peril of everlasting death, perpetual gladness and eternal joys. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. The Old Testament reading appointed for this third Sunday of Easter is taken from the 34th chapter of Ezekiel. For thus says the Lord God, Behold, I, I myself will search for my sheep and will seek them out. As a shepherd seeks out his flock when he is among his sheep that have been scattered, so will I seek out my sheep and I will rescue them from all places where they have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries and will bring them into their own land. And I will feed them on the mountains of Israel, by the ravines, and in all the inhabited places of the country. I will feed them with good pasture, and on the mountain heights of Israel shall be their grazing land. There they shall lie down in good grazing land, and on rich pasture they shall feed on the mountains of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep, and I myself will make them lie down, declares the Lord God. I will seek the lost, and I will bring back the strayed, and I will bind up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak, and the fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them in justice. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks.
The epistle reading is from 1 Peter, the second chapter. For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example, so that you might follow in his steps. He committed no sin, neither was deceit found in his mouth. When he was reviled, he did not revile in return. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but continued entrusting himself to him who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree, that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. For you were strained like sheep, but have now returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. This is the word of the Lord. We rise to sing the Alleluia and the verse. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. These things are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son. chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. He who is a hired hand and not a shepherd, who does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees, and the wolf snatches them and scatters them. He flees because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me, just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. And I have other sheep that are not of this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. We'll sing the hymn of the day, number 666, O Little Flock, Fear Not the Foe.
Amen. I am the good shepherd, Jesus says, and they will listen to my voice, so there will be one flock, one shepherd. Michelle's uncles live in Montana, and they are shepherds. They have a huge band of sheep. And recently on Facebook, they posted pictures of their moving from winter pasture to summer pasture. Sheep need to eat. And they were, the pictures were showing them going through uh, where the uncles live, a town called Harloton, Montana. They were prancing, jumping, going down the road to their summer pasture. And there were a variety of pictures, and one of them, one of the pictures showed the sheep, a certain portion of the sheep, had stopped at a stoplight. <clears throat> because you see, these sheep were really smart. They knew another voice. They knew the human law. And so they determined to stop when the light was red and go when the light was green. And another group of sheep said, man, look at this. There's all kinds of restaurants here in Harlington. Let's not go out to that pasture. It's the same old stuff out there. Let's stay here at this burger joint and we'll have the most wonderful meals. A variety, they have a menu. And so there was a picture of these sheep going into a restaurant. Some of the sheep just decided they didn't want to go to summer pasture and so they took off down a different highway and off they went. Then there were those final pictures of them, of them entering the pasture land. And some of them got to where Uncle Mark was. Our Uncle, Mar Uncle Mark's kind of ornery. If you're not a good sheep, you'll pay for it. And they got to Uncle Mark and they said, a bunch of them said, we don't really like this guy. He's not a very good shepherd. He's not very nice. He's not what we want. So let's go find a different shepherd, a better shepherd, a nicer shepherd. It's so off they went. And many of them went on through the gate, complaining and grumbling, same old pasture, same old shepherd. How boring is this? But we gotta eat, so off we go. Well, you know, some of that was a lie. <laughs> they did indeed have pictures of these sheep going through town. And probably some of them got off the path because that's what sheep have a tendency to do. The scriptures even make it clear to us, don't they, that that's what happens. Sheep stray, or even more to the point, all we like sheep have strayed, each of us going our own way, stopping at the stoplight because there's another voice that we'd rather listen to, going to a restaurant rather than to the pasture, finding a new and better and more delightful shepherd, something that's more exciting, inviting, it makes me happy. All we like sheep have gone astray, and yet, you're sheep, and I include myself in that, obviously. Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. And he's the only good shepherd. He truly is the only good shepherd. Mark, Uncle Mark, is a darn good shepherd, but he's not the good shepherd. Sometimes a pastor is called a shepherd, 
but not the Good Shepherd. And in fact, and I'll be quite honest with you, I often find myself as a hireling, as Jesus describes it, rather than a shepherd, an under-shepherd, because you see, I'm a sinner. And there are many times when I would just rather leave. I get sick and tired of the issues, the problems, of the hurt, and the pain, and the suffering that all of us experience. And I'd rather just run away and leave all of you sheep to the wolves. The only reason that I stay is because of the Good Shepherd, because the Good Shepherd forgives me of such a great sin by thought, by word, and by deed, and by deed, because I do not serve you as I should. But isn't it true that because all of us are sheep, that we too are those who are constantly straying from the voice, from God's voice, from the Good Shepherd's voice, the one who would lead us to pasture to feed us with all the good that he has accomplished for us. You see, the reason why he's called Good Shepherd is first and foremost because of Good Friday. And there's our salvation. We are nothing without Good Friday and the Good Shepherd, the Lamb of God, <coughs> sacrificed for us. We are nothing. We are sheep to be devoured by wolves. We are sheep who stray around in this world looking for all kinds of different pasture, different voices, something that's going to please us and make us happy until, well, all sheep die or are killed devoured, but we have a good shepherd. Ezekiel tells us that this shepherd searches for us and he seeks us out, and he does. He does constantly. He does that with his voice. When we, uh, when we learn in catechism, when we learn the third article of the creed concerning the Holy Spirit, the church, the pasture that God has given to us to live in, to feed in, to live by, we learn that the work of the Holy Spirit is the voice of Jesus. Jesus even says that when he, when he promises to send the Holy Spirit, he says that the Holy Spirit will bring to your remembrance everything I have said to you. And that's what we need constantly. We need constantly to be fed in our ears by the Good Shepherd and his voice. Constantly because we are sheep that would go astray, would reject the voice of our shepherd, find new and better ways. And that's what sin is. I mean, think back to the garden. When Adam and Eve sinned, and they both sinned, when they sinned, it was a rejection of God by rejecting his word. And his word, at that, at that time, his word was, was so gracious he created everything for Adam and Eve, and they were free to live in it. Just this one thing, don't eat from the tree in the middle of the garden. That's it. You're free. Just don't eat from the tree in the middle of the garden. Because if you eat from that, you reject me by rejecting my word. And there are consequences. We suffered those consequences yesterday, and we suffer them often. Death. Death comes to all, because all have sinned, all are sheep going astray. We need constantly to hear the voice of the Good Shepherd. So back to the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit calls us by the gospel, right? Um, sheep need a voice. So we, we memorize this, I believe that I cannot believe on my own. In other words, I believe that I cannot follow unless I hear the voice. Unless I hear the shepherd's voice. I believe that I cannot believe by my own strength. The Holy Spirit calls me by the gospel. And what's the gospel? The gospel is this. Your sins are forgiven. I am your good shepherd. I have given you life. Live. Live now in the freedom that God has for you. Live in his word. And his word is twofold. His word is both law and gospel. 
primary purpose of God's law is to show us that we're sinners and we need a shepherd. We need a savior. And so we constantly hear the voice of our shepherd. But the gospel then, the forgiveness, frees us to live. It frees us to hear God's word and live in it. And Jesus summarizes that word. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and all your might. And love your neighbor. Love all. Even your enemies. Especially your enemies. For the sake of Christ. Because Christ loved us as enemies. And died for us. That's what this gospel text is all about. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. When Jesus came into the upper room, as we heard last week, he says, peace be to you. And he shows them his hands and his side. He says, remember? Remember how I laid down my life for you? You're free. You sheep are free to live. But not completely free in the sense that you listen to every other voice. Listen to my voice. Come to the pasture where I can feed you. Because there's wolves out there. And those wolves are going to eat you up. They're going to devour you. They may even sound like Christians in order to devour you. So we have to listen to his voice, which means his word. And the Holy Spirit brings that word from Genesis to Revelation into our ears. And we hear it, and we read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest that word because it's faith given to us to cling to the good shepherd who laid down his life for the sheep. A pastor, an under-shepherd, is only as good as he gives God's word. One of the reasons why we cover up is so that it's not about us. It's not about what we look like, the double-breasted suit that we have on that's so attractive, or those nice polished shoes. It's about the mouth that speaks God's word. It's about the hands that feed the sheep God's body and blood and reach out in care and love for God's sheep. It's about the feet that go to those who are in need of Jesus and his forgiveness. And that's really all you see when a pastor is covered up. But you too, you too have been called to be bleating sheep. Cry out who you are. Stay in the flock because the evil foe seeks your overthrow. That we would encourage one another. One of the reasons you're going to think this maybe is a little strange, but one of the reasons why I wanted to sing the liturgy a cappella without accompaniment was so that we hear each other, that we bleat together as sheep. Some voices are better than others, right? So what? Let's bleat together as sheep, as the one flock that we are in Christ Jesus who laid down his life, the good shepherd on Good Friday died so that we may live. And he's not still dead, is he? He lives so that we can live. Indeed, the consequence of being a sinner sheep is that we die still. But we celebrate life. That is the resurrection of the dead and life everlasting. Even though we die because of Christ, the good shepherd, we shall surely live and that's been given to us. That's been given to you. Jesus says, I have other sheep that are not of this fold, and that's us. And he brings us in as we listen to his voice. Open your ears to Jesus. Your sins are forgiven you. Love your God and your neighbor. It's not a difficult task unless we make it so difficult by our rejection of the voice and by our refusal to love. And that's often where we're at. I made my own confession just now. Even though I am your under-shepherd, that is under-shepherd to God serving you, I am often a hireling, which is why I can stand here and confess, I, a poor, miserable sinner. And in that forgiveness, 
God heals us. That's what Peter told us, right? He says this, by the wounds of Jesus you have been healed. For you were strained like sheep, but have now returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. You have come into the pasture. This is the pasture that our Lord has given to us. This is where he feeds us his word and his supper so that we can be strengthened, not become fat sheep and strong sheep of our own. See, that's what the devil wants us to convince us of. You don't need Jesus. You don't need his forgiveness. You can fight the good fight on your own. You know God's law. You don't have to go to church. You don't need that pasture. Find a different pasture. Find a different shepherd. Find something more sweet to your palate. But what do we need to hear? The voice of the good shepherd. And he says, you're a sinner, but I have forgiven your sin. Now go and love as I have loved you. And we need to hear it over and over again. Otherwise, we become our own good shepherd. But there's nothing good about us, really, unless it's given to us, unless God makes us good in the forgiveness of our sins. You see, we also describe our life as being a sinner and a saint. And we are only saints in the sense that is holy ones, in the sense that the Holy One makes us holy, gives us holiness. And that can only happen in forgiveness, because the Good Shepherd laid down his life for you, the sheep. So the picture, the photograph, as, you, as we might say, because that's how the sermon began, is people hearing the five-minute warning. And they come streaming like sheep into the pasture. Because the Good Shepherd says, Lo, I am with you always, to the very end of the age. Where is he? With his voice speaking to the sheep, with his supper feeding the sheep, so that we might live in the same love that the Shepherd has given to us. Greater love has no man than this, than that he lay down his life for other sheep. In Jesus' name, amen. Now may the peace of God, which surpasses all human understanding, keep your hearts and minds through faith in Jesus Christ, your Savior. Amen. We rise to make confession of our faith in our triune God. We use the words of the church, the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only God, the Son of God, the God of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, be not made, being of one substance with the Father, I am the all things for me. Who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who is spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. And I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. For the faithful proclamation of Christ's saving name through his word, that God's people may be strengthened in the true faith and his kingdom extended throughout the world, let us pray to the Lord. 
Lord, have mercy. For the Holy Christian Church throughout the world, and for all who confess the name of Christ Jesus, that God would guard and defend us from the temptations of the devil, the world, and our own sinful flesh, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this Trinity congregation, its mission and work in this community, and its people, for the ability to meet the needs that arise as we do the work that God has given us to do, and for the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the educational institutions of our Synod, for all preschools, especially our own preschool, for all day schools and our own LSA, for high schools, colleges, universities, and seminaries, that those who teach and those who learn in them would be transformed by the wisdom of Christ through his word. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord For all who partake this day of Christ's holy body and blood, that in their eating and drinking they may receive the benefits of forgiveness of sins and the renewal of life and have a foretaste of the feast to come. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord For those who have wandered from the faith, that the Holy Spirit would use us to call them home to their Father and ours. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the government and all who have been set into positions of leadership, that they may use the authority entrusted to them honorably and for the good of all people. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who suffer from hunger, homelessness, poverty, or unemployment, that God's great mercy and love would preserve and relieve them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For all the faithful, that the Spirit would lead them to cheerful, generous giving from the bounty that the Lord provides to support the Holy Church and to help those who are in need. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For those who are sick, we especially name those among us, Richard, Elsie Pearl, Erna, Denise, Katie Beth, Laura, Vernon, Paul, Adeline, Shirley, Carlene, Jennifer, Pastor Miller, Don, Eldine, <coughs> David, Debbie, Pastor Joseph, and any others whom we might know, that God would grant healing to their bodies and strength to bear their infirmities with patience and grace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who mourn, we are mindful especially now of the Ekoff family, and Dorothy and her family, that in their time of sorrow they would not lose hope, but rely always on God's promise that he will never leave them or forsake them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. O Lord, Heavenly Father, we gratefully remember the sufferings and death of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, for our salvation. Rejoicing in his victorious resurrection from the dead, we draw strength from his ascension before you, where, where he ever stands for us as our own high priest. Gather us together from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us, for to you alone we give all glory, honor, and worship, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated.
give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Finally, we sing together, unaccompanied, the hymn that we love so dearly, I am Jesus' little lamb. I am Jesus' little lamb.